Hello everyone, this is Infinity and it is 1015 on January 31st, 2020. 1015 in the morning, I should specify. <laughs> you never know with me. Uh, and I don't know what's going on. We don't have any weird weather. It's nice out. It's sunny. It's not windy like it was a couple days ago. It was so windy here a couple days ago. Um, but my cable went out. And so did my neighbors. I'm not exactly sure what's going on. Um, they may be doing construction. Hopefully it'll come back soon. Because uh, I am so close to finishing my website. I think I need this day... Um, and maybe tomorrow, maybe two more solid days of work on it. Uh, and it'll be, is it'll be not done, <laughs> but done enough where I could go to the grocery store. <laughs> I could go to Winco. And if you don't know what Winco is, look it up. It's a 24 hour employee owned grocery store, it, but it's more than that. They have a huge bulk section. Everything in there is cheaper than even Walmart. Their produce is amazing. If you're into meat, it's crazy. Um, the the deals that they have on, on meat and just everything. So anyway, look up Winco and see, it's W-I-N-C-O, and see if you have one near you. Even if you have to drive an hour, it's worth it. It's that good. It is that good. Um, just their bulk alone, all the stuff you can buy in bulk, it's such a discount compared to anywhere, anything else. And they have stuff from, from candy, granola, pastas, uh, rices, dog, I mean, like dog treats. I wouldn't feed your, your animals those that food um but you know some treats and stuff they have bird seed they have all sorts of stuff um it's amazing so but winco for us is about 40 minutes away and then you're at the store and then you drive home and then you got to put everything away and then by the time you're done with all that depending on when you've left to to go to winco it's a day <laughs> you've done a day and you're tired and you're not going to do anything else and I have not had one of those days to be like, yeah, let's go to Winco. Uh, <laughs> but I really want to go to Winco. And how about my, oh, my internet's back. Yay. Uh, I was going to say, now that my internet's down, I was like, well, maybe today is the day to go. But I've got my internet back. Yay. <laughs> I'm excited. <clears throat> I ran an update on my computer earlier. It's been wanting to do it and my computer, oh my God, you guys. I haven't had time to deal with that, but I need to get my computer serviced. Um, it's just like, you know when you start up a Mac and the little circle's going, you're like, seriously, I just started you off. Or maybe it was in sleep mode and you open it and it's like, uh. I've had it tell me several times you're having trouble logging in. You don't know your password. Let, let us help you remember it. And I'm like, yeah, none of that happened. I never even tried to put in my password yet. And, uh, but then every time I like, I'm able to restart it and get back in and put my password in and it's fine. But it definitely has issues and it's being such a trooper. I should speak much nicer of it given what it deals with. <laughs> with me and my energy there's time like I want to use my laptop as a laptop and I can't it's just as soon as I put it on my lap and it is that close into my it's in my energy that into my energy it's like eh, 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 eh. I'm like Ugh. sometimes I can put like a a pillow or a, or a not a pillow like a book something harder in between me or you know a laptop like just something where it's just not like sitting on me and that'll make it a little bit better but for the most part I can't even do that um <laughs> and I've been working it around the clock it's not used to that either the the program in Wix to edit your website is just 
it takes up so much RAM and um, <clears throat> I tend to be one of those people <laughs> who has like 80 bazillion tabs open, maybe multiple windows, multiple programs. <laughs> I, ex- I do the same with my phone, my iPhone. I've always been this way where like anybody coming up to my computer is like, holy shit, look at all this stuff you got going on. I'm like, I know it's so bad. And then like, it'll occur to me that I'm, I'm a little bit better than I used to be. And, and Mac seemed to handle it so much more. Like it, iPhones are amazing. Like if you do that on the Android, it'll be like, you've got way too much shit open. You need to give us a break here. But Macs, our iPhones will have like 30 apps open and still just keep trooping. And you'll just be like, oh my God, look at all these apps I have open. No wonder. And it, like your battle, battery might run more, but it's not going to glitch on you. <laughs> it's funny. It's so crazy that the, the difference in, in, in quality of tech. Um, but yeah, so. <laughs> My poor, my poor Mac. I really need a new one, but this one at least needs to be serviced. It needs new, it needs more, more RAM for sure. I think that's the main problem. It's just, there's too much, too much stuff that, that it needs to process. And, and, uh, (laughs) regardless of how many apps I have open. Anyhow, seven minutes in. I actually had a topic, if you see in the title. <laughs> it wasn't Winco. It wasn't my Mac. Uh, it was autism. And those who are really difficult to reach, any any spectrum of people with autism, they run in a different in a different realm and vibration. They're connecting in a different way to the universe and to the world and to to everything. Um, and this just kind of got flung in my face. I mean, I've known this for a, a while. Uh, but last night, one of my friends and followers on Instagram sent me a, a post. Um, let's take a look here. Um, Okay, so the na- I've never seen this before. The followers on this page is a lot. Oh, first, we're going to have to acknowledge it's 1023 on the 31st. <clears throat> so this page has 630,000 followers. And it says special books by special kids. I interview people in the disability disability neurodiverse community with the intention of creating a more inclusive world. Full interviews on YouTube. Uh, And so, yeah, he just, there's just people with all sorts of, of different disabilities and, uh, what I just all sorts of stuff, um, many different things, things that you've never seen before. Um, I guarantee you very rare things, but the sweetest people, but the second to last post here is about Jonathan who has autism and he's also nonverbal. Um, Sorry, I'm watching the video. I shouldn't do that. Um, so he isn't he's somebody with autism who is completely nonverbal. He he responds physically, he'll take things, he'll grab stuff, he'll, you know, do stuff like that, but he won't talk. He won't communicate at all. And there's a lot of people 
lot of children that have been born in the last 10 years, especially, even if they're not diagnosed with autism or on the autism spectrum, they're still speaking later in life and their parents are even taking them to speech therapy, trying to get them to speak and, and pulling that out of them because by the time they're like two and a half and three, they're still not talking and their parents are freaking out. They know that they're smart. They're communicating like by doing stuff, but they're not talking. <clears throat> and then there's all the way on the other side, like Jonathan here, who is, autistic and doesn't communicate at all at least verbally and to the outside world and so my friend sent me a a post this post and said it's really sad to see this and and immediately I was like oh yeah he needs he needs somebody who's psychic who can read who can get to him on that level and she's like yeah I agree and, and so I, I was compelled and guided to, to post a comment saying that he, what, that he needs somebody who's psychic to, to communicate with him. And then somebody wrote back and said, what, what are you talking about? I'm so confused. Explain or whatever. So I explained that because of him, him being autistic he's in his he's he's yeah he's in his it's not his own world he's in the world that that we on this side cannot see so he's like half an astral half here but what's going on and what he can communicate with telepathically and psychically around him is much more robust and interesting and takes and is instant without words that are so primitive, (laughs) I guess you could say, simplistic, primitive, communication via speaking is okay, but you have to think about how that works how language and speaking works it we all have to be on board about what things are and mean and are labeled and the concepts of things and then how to put those ideas together and form sentences and then and then pronounce them and speak them and say them and string them along and together I mean Whereas telepathic communication is like, boom, 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 boom. It's like this. It's instant. You're sending, you're, you're, you're in an energetic field that is, that is lightning, light speed, faster than light speed. (laughs) It's absolutely instant. So this is why it works to heal in the quantum. This is why we can connect energetically so easily. This is why I get the communications that I get and the downloads and a lot of other people do too. And we can connect to things that are not in our visual field. That is not, you know, hard and, sorry, I thought it was really loud. It's not like solid and material. Because things exist that are not solid and material. Things exist in higher dimensions and in lower dimensions. That are in our... We are sharing space with multiple dimensions in the same physical area. And we're all connected by this web. And depending on where you're you're plugging in at... This is going to... We're going to segue right here. I'm being guided. Depending on where you're plugging in at depends on what your focus is. Where It's just like the channels on a TV or picking, picking something to watch on Netflix. You tune in to a frequency, to a vibe, to a set of, of constructed whatever that you're like, that's where I'm at now, that's where I'm going, this is why guided meditation works and we go into astral we're connecting and this is why it's so interesting and fun for me it's like oh we're gonna do a guided meditation unless I'm told ahead of time like really what the theme is a lot of times it's just this is the meditation we're doing on this day and I don't know what we're gonna do (laughs) I have no idea what we're gonna do 
where we're going to go. Sometimes I know who's going to come in and channel, um, and I'm going to channel for, but a lot of times I don't. Sometimes I think certain things are going to happen and certain other things all of a sudden come up and, and it's so interesting that a lot of times the feedback in these meditations is I saw what you were going to describe verbally before you said it. And people say that to me all the time. And what is that? That's we're connecting to we're connecting to a, a to a dimension a frequency um, where we're all experiencing the same thing. Even though he's in Canada and I'm in California, and there's ten other people or however many people are there, and we're doing it, and I'm talking us through this guided meditation, and everybody's doing the same thing, seeing the same things, and they're seeing them at the same time and then people also see their individual things because that's what it's meant to do too so we'll also be like okay I'm gonna I'm gonna be quiet now you're gonna see and get your own information and whatever that is for you it is for you and I'll do my like because we're that's the whole point of 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 doing that kind of work is tapping into a much 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 higher dimension and and with the the beings in that dimension so we can get the information we get that that highest dimensional um information and that's what i do so um so we go super high uh nothing that i do is like i said there's all sorts of there's there's lower frequencies and, and dimensions and and realms, et cetera, however, which, which way and different ways we're going to look at it. And then there's the higher ones. You would think it's obvious that you would want to maintain and be in the higher ones. <laughs> That's the goal anyway. It should be. But a lot of people are really below neutral and they're in the lower dimensional frequencies. Most people are. Most people are. Most people don't even know about this stuff to even know what this is all about. And they're just doing the best that they can. But even, and this is where it gets frustrating, for those in the know, choose to be in the lower dimensions. And this is what you would call dark magic. I'm probably in this podcast going to say this a million times. So get used to it because people need to hear it over and over again, or you never know who's new, please do not engage with people who practice spells, any type of dark magic, any type of like hex bags and anything like that. They may not even understand what they're doing. Some of them do, some of them don't. I would say mostly a lot of them don't. Because the ones that do, the ones that really do, passing down this knowledge over time to different people make it seem really great and sweet and fantastic. When in turn, they're they're tapping into darkness, to lower vibrational energies dark energies, the dark type energies, the black hole energies that will just take and suck and this kind of thing. And you tend to be more in fear, more worrisome, more dependent. These are the people who have to keep going back to, to their psychics who practice dark magic or their whatever they're called, witches, because um, there's dark witches. So dark witches, any type of dark magic. I'm sorry if this offends people. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. Sorry if you're one of those people. If you're one of those people who practice dark magic, you need to take a good hard look at what you're doing. Because you're tapping into darkness when you practice dark magic. And you do not need spells and incantations to work with angels. There's a lot of people I've come across who use the the curtain of angelic spells and work with angels and work with archangels and putting even archangel names on stuff. But there are spells and hexes and and you're paying money for this or you're attaching yourself in that way. And it's very dark. 
and and it's not it's just not good it's not good and and these people will have their a lot of problems of their own they'll be sick themselves they'll have the they're not well because they're constantly tapping in to dark magic and they have a lot of negative energy around them if you really extrapolate i'm not going to name names about people who have a shit ton of following but underneath it either they're out about it or they or it's an underneath kind of thing it's dark and like attracts like, there's a lot of people with darkness in them, so they flock to these people and they feed off of this shit. But it's dark. It's not of of the light. And it's a big deal. People need to understand that. People need to start going, no, you know what? Anything that's dark or negative that feels dark, if it's my practitioner, my healer, my seer, my psychic, my medium, and that person's dark, labels themselves as dark, why in the fuck would I want to go there? Unless I just want to be dark. Do I want to be dark? If you want to be dark, do you, dude. (laughs) But think about it. It makes no sense. And if you have seen these people, stop. Drop and roll. <laughs> stop. And then, seriously though, um, you're going to need to do cord detachments um, because there, there's, there's a nasty web from them to you attached. And, um, my phone is ringing. And I know it's just my straight up, oh my God, they're so annoying. Um, excuse me, I'm going to drink some of this. Man, this is going all over the place. I did not intend that, but that's just how it goes and flows around here. Uh... Yeah, so you're going to need some some serious clearing and healing if you do work with somebody who is of of the dark, <clears throat> who employs the dark, who works with the dark, who taps into the dark to get their information, who who uses favors and and um and barters with the dark. I mean, that's what hex hexes and and spells and dart, all that kind of stuff. You're making deals with darkness you want to make deals with darkness <laughs> and then have cancer in 10 years i wonder why okay see me then sorry i got a little bit of a tude going on i'm gonna get back to this autism thing um so i stated he needs somebody who's psychic that can connect with him, who can, who can understands and can connect with him so he can communicate. Cause he's basically like, just fuck off. You're so uninteresting to me. I don't have any desire to, to communicate the way that you people do. You're all the same. And it's basic, and it's boring, and I'm frustrated, and I'd rather be up in my head and in this world that's better than any video game you guys got going on, too, by the way. That's like, eh. You think that's exciting to me? It's kind of not. I can see why you guys like it. (laughs) He's just in another place. And... That's just, if you look at him, he's just, but he's quiet about it. I'm sure he has his moments where he probably, where, where he may get pretty frustrated because people are not understanding it. I think that, that the people closest to him, his parents and his friends and, or, you know, the people, his family, the people that are close to the family, um, they have a better time than people who who don't know him at all because they're connected to him better psychically and they can, they do communicate. He does understand. He just doesn't want to engage in that way. So anyway, 
I explained, and then this chick went off on me. <laughs> and she said, and what's really funny about this is, Okay, found... Wait, where's that? Oh, shit. Okay, yeah, that's it. Um, let me find what I... I blocked this woman. Because I, I block people who are are dark and nasty to me I don't put up with that shit and I don't want them anywhere near me or around me or coming around my profile or commenting or following me and like being a ghost about it like no I just I block people if you're nasty bye bye you're dark bye bye you're rude bye bye if you come at me for doing what I do bye bye (laughs) it's just not gonna fly you're not going to stick around. I'm not going to. I just know. Man, this won't open. Um, okay. Okay, cool. I'm going to see. I can't open the. Um, it won't open the post for some reason. But I can see the. Uh, the comment here. So this is what I wrote after she said. She said, what? explain or whatever like I'm so confused and so I said children like like this need to need to make a psychic connection with someone who is telepathically able to communicate verbal communication is very simplistic and they want to show much more than what words can describe uh and She wrote back, you obviously don't have any knowledge on autism spectrum disorder. There is no need to cure with in, in quotes them. There is no cure in parentheses. They are wonderfully and uniquely themselves. Please stop trying to self promote your unfounded methods. First off. First off, I didn't say anything about a cure. Did I? Nope. So right off the bat, she's putting words in my mouth that I never said. I never said that. I said children like this need to make a psychic connection with someone who is telepathically able to communicate Verbal communication is very simplistic and they want to show much more than what words can describe. Not a single word about myself or about a cure. And and she comes at me saying, I'm self-promoting and somehow I she just is unbelievable unbelievable (laughs) you obviously don't have any knowledge so she's decided I don't know anything she's putting words in my mouth we don't need a cure you're saying we need a cure we don't need a cure did I say that they're wonderfully and uniquely themselves did I say they weren't Please stop trying to self-promote your unfounded methods. Did I say I sell my I I sell services doing this? Call me at one eight hundred. What? A, no, I did not. The whole post is. We wish there was something you know a way to get through to him. I'm telling them how to do it. And then being attacked for it. And then Jessica, my friend, who got me into this, and when I told her, oh, I, I posted, and then somebody attacked me. What do you know? And we go back and forth, and I'm explaining to her how it works with them psychically and telepathically, the same way that it works with children who are not speaking until they're much older, even though they don't have autism because they're telepathic and they're 
working on their psychic abilities. And she's like, yeah, obviously it makes sense. I'm like, they're evolving. Humans are evolving. But they're too stupid to get it. They think something's wrong with these children. No. They're above you. You're just not listening. You're not getting it. Of course, there's nobody telling you. Now I'm telling you. So Jess goes, well, you can't be the first person to ever say this. I go, really? Have you ever seen anybody talk about? I go, go ahead, Google it. Using psychics to talk to autism children, autistic children. See what you find. Because she's like, obviously, this is what people know. And I'm like, where are you? Besides Australia. (laughs) I love you. But all of a sudden, this is like a known thing. No, it is not. People don't have not made this connection. They go, he's in his own world. We cannot reach him. We wish we could reach him. If it was a known thing, they'd be doing it. And she even said, well, you can't be the first psychic to ever know this either. I go, look, I get, I know things that most people don't know. This is why I talk about a whole bunch of shit that nobody's ever heard of before. And then they go to qualify it on Google and they go, oh, she's, this, she's talking about shit nobody's ever talked about before. And then instead of going, huh, maybe there's something to that. A lot of people go, oh, she's full of shit. <laughs> Because their dark energy is pulling them away from the truth. And then wait a few months and then see everybody else talking about exactly what I was talking about. Happens a lot. But no, nobody has done this. Nobody has actually said or practiced this. Maybe people who are psychic themselves, working with their own children, who are autistic because it comes naturally and they and they don't really are they're thinking all oh, this is they're not understanding they think because maybe they're psychic that this is why this is working but not like across the board and it is across the board the way to communicate with autistic children and people especially those who really are not having it verbally because they're over you, over it. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but they, they're just, it's not, it's just like, it, it's so primitive. Like I said, I don't know a better word for it, for verbal communication. Higher dimensional beings and 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 those in in that are galactics that are much more advanced than us, nearly all of them don't speak with verbal communication. Um, they can't. A lot of them can, but. And they do for certain things, but it's not, it's not the most efficient way to communicate. Um, <clears throat> it just isn't. <laughs> so it's the best that, that humans have at this time as a whole, but it's not going to be that way in a few hundred years from now. There's going to be a lot less verbal communication when people are talking to each other. And you can telepathically and psychically connect to people that are nowhere near you. And also right next to you. Especially if you're looking at their face and in their eyes and you're, and you're trying to get in there and psychically connect. So I say, look, you've got to, you've got to go there to bring them here. That's it. Get in there to bring them here. And still you're only going to get so far because they're wired that way. They're born to be connected to the higher dimensions, to the higher dimensional beings, to, um, the way that I told Jess was like, they were born so far into, 
connected into the higher dimensions that it's really difficult to slip out of that. Not like, not like us. Like we, when we were born, we were also connected there, but not much more loosely to where those connections can fray and complete, almost completely detach and we can forget about them and, and lose those connections um, and not be connected in that way. And that is, That's the case for most people until they reconnect, until they ha- get get into the going up the the roller coaster, <laughs> click 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 that first ascend ascending mountain as you are going to awaken spiritually and go through your universal understanding and spiritual awakening, and then we start to reconnect. Then we start to hear the guidance and and even if it's just better energetically and we're just kind of in robot mode and not really conscious of how we're being guided and really for the most part it that's kind of where it's at for most people they're just kind of like yeah I just felt this way and I'm I'm you know I know these are signs but they're not like in direct verbal communication telepathically with their guards like I am most people are not doing that Unless they're, they live this life. They live this kind of life like I do. Um, However, everybody is being connected to by their guides. It may not be a two-way connection consciously, but it is definitely coming in one way. So much so sometimes... It can be like, all right, it's like really obvious. Like you have to really put your head in the in the sand to to miss all the signs. And sometimes people do that too because they're so hell bent on what they want or what they think they need or how it should be that they're missing everything telling them otherwise. It's happened to me too. We all we all do it. We all we all get a little confused. It's and I always tell people it's always easier for me with other people than it is for myself. It's always been that way. It may always be that way. Um, you know, for me to see see through the fog and have very clear understanding of, of of the of the messages coming for other people, it's much easier than it is for yourself. And any seer will say that. Any psychic will say that. It's just doesn't matter your level it's still you're human and you're like what what's happening I don't understand <laughs> sometimes. and then sometimes it's so clear like I know exactly what you guys are saying like I'm on it and I literally give like high fives in the air <laughs> to my guides because <laughs> I'm hearing them so clearly and they're like yes 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 ding 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 and I'm like whoop 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 it's so much fun <laughs> <laughs> and there's times I'm like, please tell me clear. I don't understand. Uh. <laughs> it's all over the place. Because there's there's so much variety in the information that we get. There's so much variety in what we're going through and what we're dealing with and how we're feeling, what's happening and who's involved and blah, 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 blah. So it's it's interesting. But one thing's for sure, getting back to autism, <sighs> To communicate, <laughs> to reiterate, to communicate with those on the spectrum of autism, you need to communicate or you need to employ those who can connect psychically um, and learn and practice. And and I guarantee you that if you show the effort in doing this, if you start not sh- zipping, the, zipping the lip, <laughs> don't talk shut your mouth and send pictures and send video and send words and send ideas and send those types of, of nonverbal communication, the psychic, the telepathic that people have such a difficult stick in their ass about get over it. We're all psychic. Every single human being is psychic. You have an energetic body. You have a spiritual body. 
you're connected in ways that you, that is ridiculous not to tap into. Once you, if you know about this and you ignore it, then, you know, boo on you. I don't even know. I try not to judge people, but, you know, people are, people, again, have such a stick in their butt. I get attached so often about when I reach out and tell people things and then they, they're, they, they attack me personally because it has to do with something spiritual or metaphysical. And it's like, oh, you're like this woman, you're self-promoting. It's like, no, I'm educating. I'm educating. There's a difference. There's a difference between self-promotion and education. If you find it, they, I might be somebody you want to talk to about stuff. Go to my website. <laughs> You want to go in your, uh, I'm doing my job right now for free. I'm not self-promoting. I'm giving information. And I do that a lot because and I'm never going to be one of those keep you on the hook kind of like for the information oh you gotta gotta see me privately to get your information (laughs) or there's psychics that charge 15 bucks a minute and there's some people who are who are great life coaches they're they're empaths but they charge like 600 bucks an hour and they're not even doing healing of any kind that's ridiculous to me that's crazy. Like, I don't even, I, I, the, the, the kind of work that I do, the level of healing, deep, deep, deep healing that I do for people, I could charge thousands of dollars for. And I've been told that. Um, but... I can't feel good about myself if I'm, if I feel like I'm, I don't know, like if I, if I can't take advantage, let's just put it that way. I wish I could just do everything I do for free, honestly. (laughs) I do. Um, and it's taken a long time to get to where I am now with my with my, with my prices, because I needed to learn that people need to invest in themselves, and I need to pay for shit, and my time is valuable, and like I said, I could charge a lot more, but I don't, if you compare what I offer, the level of, that I offer it at, the level of connectedness, the level of healing, the level of results, and you compare that. If you're like going on Amazon and looking at what people offer and their price points and what you get, you know how there's that like check, 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 check boxes? I would check all of the boxes. (laughs) All of them. Like you cannot compare. And this isn't an ego thing. It's just fact. It's fat. It's also why I tend to intimidate people. Um, but that's not really my problem. It happens a lot. It's not really my problem. I'm the real deal. I'm always looking out and thinking about the betterment and service to others. Always. I'm always trying to put out the best positive energy as I possibly can. But that doesn't mean I'm a doormat. And that doesn't mean people can talk to me any which way they want to and not be handed themselves to them. 
if I'm being guided to do that. Sometimes it's just like, I'm, I'm not even like, goodbye. I don't even give it a, I like, I'll write back, LOL. <laughs> when somebody comes at me nasty, I'm like, ha, you're funny. And that's about as much energy as I'm going to put on that one. Um, but then there's other times where my guides are like, no, you're turn your ass back and go give it, go give it. Cause they need to hear it. Like this woman saying that I was, she even quoted me and keep saying cure. <laughs> I'm like, I never, I'm like, huh, never said cure. You know how stupid you look? I'm sorry. But anybody reading can see I didn't say that. You look like a fool. And now you're roping me into your foolishness. You're putting words in my mouth. You're telling me what I do and do not know. And you're telling me what to do. Who are you? That's what I said. Who are you? My my end of this quote of this comment is who are you that thinks you can that this is okay to behave like this? Who are you? <laughs> what? <laughs> and then my friend Jess went and liked everything, put up comments and said her own thing about it cuz she was She's totally, she gets, she uh, totally understands it. What I'm saying about the psychic thing and, and communicating telepathically. I mean, there's a reason why they're quiet. There's a reason why they're in their head. There's a reason why they are, they are the way that they are. It's a reason why when you get them together, they're all like in it together. They're being telepathic and psychic. They don't have to even know each other. They get around new, new children that are never met each other before. New pe- people that are autistic. Once they get around each other, I mean, it's fascinating. They're on a different level. A lot of people are, but we give them medication and we call them disabled. They're just on a different level. They're connected on a different level, but no, let's medicate them. Let's dumb them down to our level. Let's regulate them. Let's tell them what they see and what they hear is, is crazy. And then let's make them toxic with medication and really mess them up. So then dark stuff comes in and really messes with them. And this is what happens. They're connected on a higher frequency. They're, and then it's witnessed and then they're called crazy. They're being given toxic medication, which lowers their vibration. But because there's still somebody who's very, like a, a very, uh, intense like conduit type person connected type person but now instead of their antenna pointing high it's pointing low to the lower frequency and then they and then they start to to bring in and take on negative energy and act out and and get violent or you know attack people say very horrible things it's because they're picking up on a lower vibe lower frequency lower channel coming in but they're the crazy ones. <laughs> so stupid. I'm really spicy today. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's because I only slept like three hours or no, it was more than that. Four. Four hours. Um, and this whole thing with this chick well for a reason because I wouldn't be talking about autism on here today if this didn't happen and so obviously it's important to be talking about this today and getting this message out there there's a lot of information that I have that needs that has come you know that I have talked about it's not the first time I've talked about this I think I've mentioned this before and at least one of my close to 400 videos on my YouTube channel and the different things that have been talked about through <laughs> throughout this entire time that I've been been uh, broadcasting. Uh, so it's not like I've never mentioned this before, but I've never had a podcast and I've never, ta- and this is going to be my seventh episode and this just happened. 
uh, overnight with this woman and this whole, and this, and this sweet boy, Jonathan, who is autistic. And I hope that the, the comments get seen by somebody, by people who can use the information and let it absorb. Um, it was also why I needed to come back at this woman hard and put her in her place. So nobody else feels that they can come at me the same way she did and not read what I wrote and put words in my mouth and disregard the information and the knowledge that I'm giving them to employ and use. So hopefully on that end, those people will see that that can use that and, and something will happen with that. And on this end, the same thing. So be it. So, so it is, so be it, so be it, so it is. Um, and yeah, I guess that's it about that. It is, uh, 11.06 in the Pacific. It's 50 minutes and what? 55 seconds into this podcast of me ranting this morning. Thanks for going on this wild ride with me. Uh, I am a very passionate person. I am extremely fiery. Um, I do have a very sensitive emotional side that's also very watery. I'm very free flowy. Um, but I wouldn't be here doing what I do and, and on this mission if I wasn't an extraordinarily passionate person and somebody who does not get broken and bent and pushed around and walked on, especially now. Like, don't. Just don't. Don't. <laughs> I'm I'm open to talking to anybody and having an open dialogue and 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 explaining things and and telling my story. And I'm an open book. I am an open book. That's something I had to come to terms with when I got put on this path. <laughs> And I used to do phone sex for a living for years. And when all of this started happening, I was doing phone sex. It was how it was, it was a big part of how I trained to be so psychic and to get into the quantum. I'm very open about that. I've talked about it on my YouTube channel. This is nothing new. I'm not ashamed of it. I was empowered by it. I helped a lot of people. There was a lot of therapy done there, a lot of talk, a lot of healing. I was, I've been, I've been healing people my whole life in different ways, even in phone sex. (laughs) Um, it was challenging. It was rewarding. It gave me a lot of freedom and the exact type of thing that I needed at the time because I couldn't work in, in, a, in a building with people. I realized after working at home and having a couple of different projects um, for about a year doing different things. One was I was a business manager for an artist and another one was I, I did... Uh, digital painting for a traditional watercolor artist. Um, So all of that I did at home after my last bout of, I can't, I got to leave work because my body is breaking and then I ended up on disability and that's that. (laughs) Um, And that was the last time I worked and that was in... 2013 the last time I had like a regular job was 2013 so yeah I'm an open book I had to come to terms with that when all of it when I started getting the visions when I started fully understanding in in that space when time after time after time my callers would say you're reading my mind. You're reading my mind. You're reading my mind. It's like you're reading my mind. Oh my God. I don't, I don't, this kind of thing doesn't happen with anybody. And I was a busy girl, very popular (laughs) because the level that I could take people to in their mind was unlike anybody else that they knew. I didn't know what I was doing. I've known I was psychic since I was five. But 
I hadn't practiced since I was seven. Like I shut that stuff down when I was like seven or eight when my mom would take me to people's houses around town and they would talk to the psychic little girl and like put me up on a pedestal and all the kids would be playing and I would be like giving the adults and their parents all the information that ultimately they wouldn't listen to. And so eventually I got tired of being ignored and being treated like this little show pony. And I was an adorable little girl. I was so cute. Oh my God. They, everybody called me an angel, which is really funny. Um, (laughs) Uh, it might be like, yeah, she's my little angel, my little angel, my little angel. It's so ironic that I'm an incarnated angelic, but that's what she would call me. And that's what everybody, Vanessa, that's my, my given name is Vanessa also means butterfly. And they would, and there, if this was a Spanish speaking community, so they were fully into it. So it wasn't a white community. And I think I should preface that when I tell this story, because I think most people are like, I can't imagine you know, most people think I'm like an Italian mix or I'm, I'm a mutt. Let's just, I'll, I'll talk about this real quick. I'm Colombian, Jewish, Spanish, French, uh, English, Polish. A lot of people think I'm Italian. There's none of that going on. Um, but the mix, I guess, kind of looks like it. And I am pretty fiery. Um, but it's mostly Latin. Um, it's kind of a, a, a straight, a straight mix, a straight mix, actually. It's, it's kind of in between. Um, and what time is it? Ah, eleven twelve on the 31st. Uh, so yeah, when I was a little girl, it became obvious when I would be like, Hey, mister. I'm supposed to tell you not to worry about your mom in the hospital. She's going to be okay. And like, he's like, I didn't tell anybody about my mom in the hospital. She's, you know, whatever. Or I knew things and I was giving messages to people about like bank stuff and mortgages and home and health and all love and family and dead people and all sorts of stuff. And people were just like, (laughs) <laughs> there's our magic mirrored number 11 13 on the 31st we've got a lot of ones and threes going on here people one one three with a one uh three one looks really cool um <laughs> as i'm talking about this so So yeah, so it became obvious that this is what I could do. And then they started setting it up. Oh, you should bring Vanesita over. We're having a party and da, 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 da. Okay. And it just came so naturally for me to look at a person and get information. Tell them the information. Look at a person, get information, tell them the information. Like I was doing this as a effing child, five, six, seven years old. But people ignored me. They ignored my advice. They ignored the advice of their of their spirit tribe of their of of the their angels is really what I called them. It was like, and that's really mostly who I. That's like the first information I that comes to me is is from the angelics, and and so, but they would ignore it. And as a human little girl, I was like, what is wrong with you? Because then I would see people a few weeks later. And they would be worse than I saw them before. And they didn't listen. And they didn't do what they were told. Oh, I didn't. I'm not. uh, What should I do now? And I'm like, oh, my God. What is wrong with you? Like, it was so frustrating to look at adults and see them as these infantile children. And I was the child. I was like, are you kidding me with this shit? I'm missing out on playing outside with the kids and being in the pool and having a good time. And you guys don't even listen to me. Screw you. And and then the, the, what broke the camel's back was when my mother driving, I'll never forget. I'm sitting in the back seat. She's driving. I'm stewing because I know what's going to happen. I know what's going to happen. They're going to, they're going to angel this and angel that all over me. And then they're going to ignore me frustrating it's not like I was getting paid for it I don't know if my mom was 
I I don't think so. <laughs> don't think she was collecting money. I think she just liked the attention as an MPD. She was very into it. Okay, so I've known I I've had this ability, and any site any real deal psychic that I've ever met looks at me and goes, "Whoa, yo, you're you got it going on," and I'm like, "Uh huh." And there's been times, I mean, through my teens and 20s and, and where I, I have, I did try to get in. I was totally into learning about soul stuff and super into souls, anything about souls. I was into um, not so much esoteric stuff, psychic stuff, um, reading about um, just the different uh, the prophets, the very famous psychics, the, you know, any of that type of business I was into. Um, but life was always way too complicated and painful as a, as a fibro patient, as somebody in pain my whole life, as a physical psychic and, and medium and medical medium. And I didn't know it. So life was just very, it was difficult. Um, I would always felt what I would call impressed upon, by my guides, but I didn't want to call them my guides. I would just say, I just feel sometimes so pushed and so impressed upon. Like I just like, I'm like, they, I could hear them sometimes very clearly one time, extraordinarily clearly when they were warning me not to leave my car because it would be stolen. And I kept going back and anyway, long story short, it was stolen. It was gone the next day, just like they said it would be. And after that event is when I, I stopped fucking around with not listening. Cause I, what's so ironic is as a, a tiny child, it was so frustrating to me that the adults didn't listen to the, to the guidance. But then as I, and then I shut it down. I went to my last party I went to and, and my mother's in the, we're in the car and she goes, you know, Vanessa, Vivi, she's from Columbia and I don't do her accent very well at all. And I've never even tried because one is enough, but she's like, maybe, maybe you can just be a little bit nicer with what you say to people, like not so sometimes it's so negative or sometimes it's not, but you're just like, like she's trying to tell me, just keep it on the up, keep it positive, keep it light. Like don't tell people like, don't be so, so, you know, sometimes it's, it's not like, like it's not negative, but it's, it is, it was always constructive. It was never negative, but it was, it was, sometimes it was like, you're not, you need to do this. Like it was very, forceful I guess like it's hard to describe but as a psychic you're not, as somebody who's really a psychic when when you're told like curb your message don't give the message that you're getting is basically what she told me like if you're getting this tone of message turn it into this tone of message I guess that's the best way to put it and I was like I I don't have a say in the message. In my head, I'm thinking this. I don't have a say in the message. Don't you get that? Don't people get that? It is not my message. It is the message. There's a difference. When I say this is how I feel, that's different. But when I say this is a message, that's a message. It's not my message. It's the message. So as a seven-year-old child driving to yet another party with my mother and she's saying, turn it from this tone to this tone. Don't make it this message. Turn it into that message. I'm like, you know what? How about no messages? How about <laughs> no more messages? And I go, you know what? I, I'm, I don't know what to do because I haven't been hearing them. I'm not getting any messages full on lie, <laughs> full on lie. My mom's like, she looks at me from the rear view mirror and she turns around practically killing us in the process. Gosh, she's a horrible driver. Holy. <laughs> and she goes, what? 
that's a lie. You're lying. Why are you lying? And I'm just looking at her going, oh boy, you just got to dig in. You're you're committed now. (laughs) You're committed to this lie. And I was like, yeah, I'm committed. I don't want to do it. I don't want to show up to this party. I don't want to sit on the pillows. I don't want to... I don't want to connect in front of all of these adults sitting on sitting cross-legged in the floor in front of me when it's hot and they stink and I could be out in the pool. No. Like, I just saw the whole scene. I was just like, no. Like, you know when you see yourself in a situation and the thought of it is so repulsive to you that you will do anything not to be in that situation? That's what I felt like. That's what it felt like. I was just like, mm-mm. It's like, nope. Don't get any messages. I don't know what to do. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to make up messages. So and we said, my mom's like, what are we going to tell them? Oh my God. She's so concerned about everybody else. And, and we get there and the lady's like, want to see that? Look at what I did. And she set up this room, this lady. I mean, she was a sweetheart too. It sucked too, because I really did like this lady. She was a sweetheart, but I'm like, you're, you're committed. And there are so many people there. Like, I don't remember if it was a holiday or what was going on, but there was a lot of people there. Ariel! Um, there was a lot of people there. And, and I was just, I just had this look, this vibe, and the lady's like, what's, what's going on? What's wrong? Um, when she saw that I was not super excited about what she was showing me and I said I don't I don't get the messages anymore and my mom just is stewing and fuming literal flames and vapor coming off of this woman I could see (laughs) oh my god memories memories oh my goodness and she's looking back and forth. Me, my mom, my mom, me, me, my mom. And I'm just sitting there and I'm I'm seven years old. Seven and a half, maybe. Cause I remember I do remember it was it was more summertime. And I'm like, I'm I'm sorry. And she was like, oh, it's okay. I'm sure that they'll come back and talk to you again. And we can do it another time. And I was like, maybe. Okay, bye. <laughs> and I took off running to the backyard, stripping my clothes off. I had my, my, my bathing suit on underneath. Jump in the pool with all the kids. They're looking at me like, oh, you're here early. Because they were used to me showing up like, hours later like after they're tired and done swimming I'm like play with me they're like we've been playing for four hours we're kind of waterlogged I'm like (laughs) so this time I show up and I'm like hi and they're like what are you doing here I was like yeah I'm not doing it (laughs) they're like what I'm like I'm not doing it I'm not doing it anymore they're like oh cool and then we just played and that was my life until I started not feeling good and which was not right around that time I've had physical problems my whole life bouts time bouts of of weeks I remember when I couldn't go to school because there there would be something energetically repulsive at school and there's so many people and kids and the environment for somebody like me in at school is so oh my god so hard school oh my god it was like, I liked the social aspect of it. And I didn't understand because, because as empaths, we're, we're into connecting with people. We're connected with people and we're telepathic and we're psychic with people. We know what's going on with them. So when we're around them, we can't help. We're empath, we're empaths, we're empathic, we care. So we're, we're more into the human aspect than the learning aspect and the book aspect and what the teacher's saying aspect. Like that's, unless it's really interesting, it's not going to stick because there's so many other things going on in there. 
And I never understood what that was about. I never correlated that to, I feel this way because I'm connecting to the people around me. I was just always connected to the people around me. And they were, and it was, it was that. And it was also, um, it wasn't until I was in high school, like when I had my first migraine and I had to just, I didn't even go to the office. I just, all I could do was get to my car and go home and lay there and go what is going on and I know now that it it was like uh, some kind of turning point switch going off with my third eye it was so intense so intense and then I had I had that phenomenon what's known as migraines and then ice pick headaches and and all sorts of head issues and and headache type stuff and neurologists and all that sort of stuff I wish I had I wish I had a dollar for every MRI I ever had I could I could have a nice meal um because I've had a lot of brain MRIs because my brain my head has has reacted really intensely for many 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 years now I know why it was my third eye and my crown chakra opening up it was me going through the kundalini process me all this energy happening um throughout my 20s and 30s and then finally when I get to 39 is when I really connected when they brought me up into the higher dimension and told me how to how to cure myself how to get rid of the the energy with the fibro and and all that um that I talk about briefly in my other episodes but I will do a dedicated podcast to that and oh my goodness I've been going on haven't I it is 11 27 27 is a very important number I have been talking for holy shit 71 minutes about all this stuff rant all this stuff that was supposed to really be about autism but I guess kind of showing and giving you guys some history about what it was like to be a psychic child. No, I I wasn't autistic. Um, I'm not autistic, but I understand because it was like living in two worlds for me as a child, very much so. And I've always felt so much more connected to a side of life that cannot be seen. And for autistic people, they're way more in in there, in that world. It's not their world. It's not like they're in their own world. That's almost a meaning. It's like, no, they're in the universe. (laughs) And you don't have the key. You don't know where the door is. And you certainly don't know how to put the key in the lock. And and that's just their position. That's just, they, they... it's not a, it's not like a stubbornness thing. It's just their how it's how they're wired. It's like trying to run a 1.0 program into like a 20th generation system that is so far advanced that it's just like uh, it's difficult. They're evolved. They're evolving. Humans are evolving. We are evolving. Um, those of us that are even older are evolving. We're getting encodements where our crystalline DNA is activating. Uh, we, we're evolving. And those that are being born, especially in the last 10 years and especially these days, are definitely more evolved, especially if they're being born to light workers. So this is something to understand, to really take in, that if you, if you know people or have have children that are like this that are more quiet that are young and they're not talking yet that you're worried about them because they, they may be autistic or whatever um understand that they are working and beefing up their telepathic and psychic connections and you cannot work on being telepathic and psychic if you're talking now i'm going to leave you with that Thank you so much for listening, you guys. Infinite love and blessings. Don't forget the key is to create. I love you already. And remember to live in love. And I'll see you on the flip side, guys.